Okay, hello, uh, my name is Artur Glier and I work at Shipstead as Android developer and I'd like to join your morning cup of coffee and talk a little bit about uh, Rx or aka reactive extensions, what it is, what it's not, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to talk about it in context of Rx Java uh, and by definition Rx Java means that these are reactive extensions for the JVM, uh, a library for composing asynchronous and event-based programs using observable sequences for the Java virtual machine. Yeah, but there are other ways uh, to think about, uh, you know, Eric's Java, and you can think about it as a new kid on the block, or you can think about it as this new sexy girl next door. Except that there is nothing really uh, new about Eric's Java, because it's a technology rediscovered after many years, and Eric's Java was, uh, was developed uh, by Microsoft, by a guy called Eric Mayer, as reactive extensions for the c -sharp platform. Then it was adopted by Ben Christensen from Netflix, and he created Eric's Java and Eric's JS. And then it was adopted by, um, by GitHub, they created uh, Reactive Cocoa. Some of the early adopters are Microsoft, Netflix, New York Times, SoundCloud, and Square. So these are all major players in our market. And if you dig uh, a little bit about Eric's Java, you will find that Eric's Java is all about functional reactive programming. But what does it really mean, right? Uh, you know, in, in simple words, uh, functional reactive programming is programming with asynchronous data streams plus every engineer's best friend, a toolbox. And <clears throat> it's good to know functional reactive programming because it's a cross-platform idea, not really a technology. So it works in any language you pick. And it's also a new fun tool. And I tend to say that if you only have a hammer, uh, you tend to see each problem as a nail. It's also less error prone, but it has a really steep learning curve. And the steep learning curve is because if you, if you, check, if you look up the alphabetical list of observable operators for Eric's Java, you will find out that there are about 250 operators. So that's a lot to learn. Eric's Java is an extension of the observer design pattern. Uh, think about auction hunters. Every auction is a great example because you have bidders that place the bids, you have auctioneer that accepts a bid and propagates the event to the other bidders. So this is a great example for observer design pattern. And you can try doing this uh, model in different ways. You can try using iterables, uh, but iterables are pool-based approach and any logic requires the result to be available at execution time. So it's not really good. So maybe you can try doing futures. And Futures are great, but futures are straightforward to use for a single level of asynchronous execution. And the thing is that conditional asynchronous execution flaws become difficult to optimally compose. And if you use futures, you probably end up using callbacks. And you end up in callback hell. And this is a place we don't really want to be. Now, if you are trying to use the classic, classical observer pattern, uh, the problem is that a producer cannot signal consumer that there is no more data available, and the producer cannot signal consumer that error has occurred. But Java, Eric's Java, is better and it can. It extends the observable, observer pattern uh, to support sequences of data events. It adds operators that allow you to compose sequ sequences together declaratively, and you don't have to worry about low-level threading, synchronization, thread safety, and concurrent data structure. Now, how do you learn Eric's Java? And there are multiple ways to learn Eric's Java. For example, there is this hard way. And the hard way is, you know, trying to learn about functional reactive programming from the internet. And if you look up the internet and you look up the functional reactive programming uh, keyword, you can find that it's a responsive, resilient, elastic, message-driven something from FRP manifesto. You can also find that it's Rx, I mean that Rx is observable plus link queue plus schedulers, and maybe it's something reasonable for C-sharp developers, but not to me, for example. Also, you can find that programming, it's programming paradigm for reactive programming using the building blocks of functional programming. That's pretty complicated. And you don't even want to go to Stack Overflow because on Stack Overflow, functional reactive programming is pretty much anything. Well, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you're trying to learn Eric's Java or any Eric's uh, uh, technology uh, by the documentation, you are pretty, you're pretty much going to end up uh, reading things like this. For example, a documentation for flat map latest function is 
projects each element of an observable sequence into a new sequence of observable sequences by incorporating the elements index and then transforms an observable sequence of observable sequences into an observable sequence producing values only from the most recent observable sequences. Oh my god. Instead of learning anything, you are probably visiting Watican. <laughs> but there is an easy way, right? And the easy way is that Eric's Java is all about marbles. Not really these kind of marbles, but these kind of marbles, a marbles diagram. And you can see a diagram that consists of the colorful uh, you know, circles, which are events, the cross, which means that an error has occurred, and the pipe, which means that a stream has terminated. And you can model any kind of Rx uh, logic with these kind of marble diagrams. Now, Rx Java is all about code. So I'm going to show you how we do Rx Java, how you can do Rx Java. This is the world's most simple observable with Eric's Java. It takes a string and it puts it into the stream, into observable. Now, to make it work, you need a subscriber. Uh, and the world's most trivial subscriber is this. You basically implement three callbacks and then you join them together. So you just call observable subscribe subscriber. Now, there is a magic going on between the lines, but I'm going to talk about it later. Now, that's a small win. But let's imagine that you become an Aftenbladet's mobile developer and you are to create a mobile client for their website. So you are given an API that fetches top stories and then it can fetch the, item, uh, the particular item details. And if you look at top stories, this is just a collection of IDs. And if you look at uh, item endpoint, this is, this is the details for a particular item. So what you have to do is you have to fetch the list of IDs and then fetch the details of any, every particular ID. And if you think about how to do it in a traditional way or with any means that you are, use, uh, you are in any way that you are doing it today, it probably means a lot of work. But with Eric's Java, it's pretty simple, actually. Okay, so what you have to do with Eric's Java is you call top stories endpoint to get the list of IDs, uh, but the list of IDs is the event, and you don't want to have the list of IDs as the event. So you flat map this uh, list of IDs into a, into a observable of IDs. Now, then if you have uh, any particular ID, you can uh, fetch the item's details. Then you can collect every single item's details into a collection, and then you can subscribe to it. Also, there is an interesting uh, thing about Eric's Java and Android. On Android, it's super important to remember about uh, threading, right? You don't want to do anything that takes a lot of time on the UI thread. So what Eric's Java does, it supports doing things in the background. Subscribe on tells the Eric's Java to use a new thread for any computation, and observe observe on tells Java, uh, I mean tells Eric's Java, uh, to to listen for the for the result on the main thread. So it, it's the UI thread. Uh, yeah, and how does the subscriber look? Subscriber is pretty plain, uh, it's pretty straight. Uh, so if you get the result, you simply, uh, you, you get, you, if you get the collection of result, uh, results, you put it into an adapter. If you, you know, somehow, uh, somehow uh, get the error, you handle the error, and if the stream is finished, you do th something about it. For example, you can stop refreshing the page. Now that's a huge win. If you think about how to do it in, in a, you know, traditional way in uh, many popular libraries and frameworks, it's a lot of work. Now, what about if you want to filter, uh, filter these items? Let's say you want to show uh, just the articles that are newer than some particular timestamp. Well, with, with Eric's Java, it's pretty simple because what you have to do is you just have to chain a filter function. Yeah, that's a huge win too, right? And what if you want to limit the number of responses? Uh, to, let's say, I don't know, 10, uh, 10 articles. Well, with Eric's Java, it's simple too. You just have to chain the limit function. And that's a huge win too. So, as you can see, you can win big with Eric's Java because of, uh, you know, um, function composition. Uh, yeah, it's function composition. Uh, okay, but there is, uh, there is one more thing that's pretty interesting about, uh, about uh, request composition, and it's a zip function. So imagine that you enter some, uh, some I don't know, uh, some, some page, 
and you have to fetch the data from different endpoints. And you don't want to see, uh, you know, layout flying around, you know, things being resized, replaced, and stuff like that. You want to show the layout only when you have all the data available. So, if you are about to do it with uh, any framework that you are using right now, it's probably cumbersome. You probably have to uh, remember the state from some uh, request, then do something about this result, then fetch the other result, uh, combine them together, and, you know, do lots of stuff. With Rx Java, it's pretty simple. You only have to use the zip function. And what zip function does, it waits for the result of every stream that you, that you pick, and it combines the results together. And that's a really huge win. Actually, it's pretty much mind-blowing. Uh, but what if you have an existing code and you want to use Rx Java with your existing code? Uh, well, it's pretty simple because you can uh, combine your existing code with Eric's Java to create observables and to use the observable functions. Uh, so what you have to do, you have to just use uh, observable create method and wrap your function with it. Uh, and your function would be, in this case, uh, get device reg ID. And then you just have to subscribe to it. And that's it. And you can chain any function you like. You can filter it, you can limit it, do whatever you like. And that's also a huge win. So the bottom line, what I want you to remember is that basically Eric's Java is all about fun, a developer's fun. And if you have any, uh, if you are, have any uh, will to learn Eric's Java, you can also have a look at my gist. Uh, there are lots of resources there, uh, a lot of cool stuff, and you can read about it more. Uh, if you have any questions, you can reach me at this email. And if you are interested in this uh, particular topic, uh, there is a sequel going on. Uh, it's under construction, uh, but it's called Refactoring Android to Rx Java, and I'm going to show you a lot of code of how to replace the existing uh, you know, patterns uh, with Rx patterns. So stay tuned, and see you next time. Thank you.